Right, I didn't want this to be the video that I come back to YouTube on after being missing for about eight years or so, but I feel that it's a topic I need to cover and I've been wanting to come back to YouTube anyway. I've got lots of topics I want to talk about and this one, unfortunately, is one that's always at the forefront of my mind and I literally had a really bad cry in the shower just about an hour ago and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a video on this because there are other people in my situation, I know I'm not the only one, and I just want to be able to make you feel like you're less alone if you're in the same situation as me, if you're an auntie or you're an uncle or you are, you know, you could be a well-wisher. I love you all, but, you know, sometimes the comments that people make to people in my situation just don't come across well at all they you know they can be really upsetting they can be insulting they can be offensive um so i thought i'd just make this video just to you know just to clarify a few things and i'm speaking on my own behalf but possibly on the behalf of other people in my situation as well um so firstly nobody is going to be fortunate in every single area of their lives. I mean, some people can be, but not everybody is at every moment in their life. So, you know, you'll either have some misfortune in your health, your well-being, your, um, your wealth, your career, your personal life. Um, maybe, you know, something could happen to someone you care about. So, you know, misfortunes are a part of life. And, you know, as a Muslim, I believe that we are tested by loss of health, fruits, lives, and if I missed one, I think I might miss one wealth. Did I say that one? We are tested by the loss of these things. So, um, you know, misfortune and the, the experience of losing something is something that we all experience at some stage in our lives. And for me, you know, this one mis big misfortune in my life, I've had many, but one of the big misfortunes has been that I've not been able to get married. And, you know, unfortunately, this is a topic that everybody likes to talk about, um, whether invited to or not, and people like to comment on it. And, you know, it's almost, I've been told many times that I'm somewhat mysterious and I'm a mystery to people because they just can't understand how someone like me could be single. But it's actually very easy when you sort of break it down and you know, if you know me as a person, I'm not someone who can force myself to fake something or force myself into anything. I mean, I'm sure during the arranged marriage era, um, you know, many women, many men would have forced themselves to, to get together with the person that they're being forced to marry. But that's not me. I can't do it. And also, I, I just... And the other thing is, is that... So that's the first thing, that I can't force myself. And the second thing is that I truly believe that compatibility is key. Um, and for most people, they can detect that at a subconscious level. So you don't even have to be very consciously doing it. You will just know if you're matching the energy or you're vibing with someone, you know, whether there is a spark of attraction or any chemistry there or not, you will know that. And usually within minutes of meeting that person, um, I've considered people for a longer period of time before, like, you know, giving it four to six weeks, for example, and uh, where I've just sort of kept in touch over phone calls and I've done all of that. I've, I've made a lot of effort because also as a Muslim, you know, you, we believe that we have to make the effort. It's not just a matter of just making dua and praying for something, but you've actually got to try. And I've been trying for a long time, for more than a decade in this area, but Obviously, you know, there are restrictions as well. So because I'm Muslim and I'm a practicing Muslim, I couldn't indulge in haram activities in this whole, you know, in this whole process of seeking someone to marry. I could not go on that, down that road because I believe that that's wrong to do. Um, and that itself is a struggle when you're living in the West because that's the normal way of doing things. So you kind of, you know, you get a boyfriend or a girlfriend and then you go and you spend a lot of time with them, you even move in together, you uh, travel together and it's kind of like you're married, you know, before getting married. So 
was not able to do that. And I don't regret that. Any any sacrifices that it's not really a sacrifice, but like say if, if it were deemed to be a sacrifice, then I do that for the sake of Allah. And I know that in the long term there's benefit in adhering to the laws that Allah set out in the Quran. Um, it's just that it's not helpful if you're an auntie and unc or uncle listening to this, please don't assume things about young women and men who have not been able to get married. Please don't assume that they are too fussy or that they have extremely high standards. I mean, some people might be, but that's not everybody. Um, please don't assume that they are going about to go through menopause, therefore we should just rush and marry them off to anybody. Again, that's not true. Uh, my mum gave birth to my youngest brother when she was 37 years old. And there are countless women out there who are birthing well into their 40s. So this is not something that we should just panic and rush into because getting married is a major life decision. And you don't want to make that decision wrong because it will affect your whole life. So you, you still have to be level-headed when you're making such a decision. Yes, we should be open-minded enough to consider any good potential spouse that comes our way. But that doesn't mean that just because they look good on a piece of paper that we should just skip the whole getting to know them process and skip all the background checks and just sign a piece of paper and get married and be done with it. That's not how it works. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry about the rant nature of this video, but it's just so frustrating. And this is something that's, that affects me on a daily basis. Um, so I thought I'll just, I'll talk about it. I'll, I'll open up the topic on my own YouTube channel. It's a, it's a micro channel. I've not even been on YouTube for years and a lot has happened in that time. I matured a lot in that time as well. Um, I'm actually really happy that I kept acquiring skills, kept growing in knowledge as well during that time, because now that I've come back onto YouTube, I'm hoping that I'll stay and I'll be able to talk about these sorts of topics in a lot more depth and also talk a lot more about the other areas of my life where I've been gaining experience and skills that I can talk about, like health, like my education, like, yeah, just other topics. Um, I, I really hope to talk about those other topics as well. But yeah, this one <laughs> has been the bane of my life. And, you know, don't get me wrong, like I have a longing to be pulled up. I really want to get married. I really want to be in a normal, healthy, flourishing relationship in in the sanctity of marriage. Um, I would love that. I mean, I've all my friends are married. Um, and I got the news of just, of two of them yesterday, um, either delivering or we're going to be delivering soon because they're expecting so, you know, that's amazing and it really lights up my day and I love to hear that. But then at the same time, uh, when you're getting comments from left, right and centre, and don't forget, you know, it's usually human nature to want to get married or to couple up. I'm going to keep saying married because I'm Muslim. So this is my practice. My practice is that I could have that relationship within marriage. I can't have it otherwise. So that's why I'm going to keep referring to marriage. But... If you're not a Muslim and you're watching this video, then you can sort of translate that in your head into whatever is the norm for you and your culture. But yeah, for me, um, you know, I do really want to be coupled up. Um, I think it's natural to want that. I don't think anybody needs to be reminded of this basic human desire or requirement that we have as human beings. So it's just unnecessary to keep pressuring I actually truly believe that if you want to help somebody, then you should provide them with a resource. So you should, you know, you should go to that person and say, oh, by the way, you know, I was thinking about you and I was thinking that um, you're still single. And if you're looking, you know, I know a great guy, like that would be helpful. Um, and it's something that we need to also explain to the aunties and uncles in our society who love to make all these lovely comments about us. Um, so, you know, definitely people should try and help if they can. And if they can't, then just don't say anything because not saying something hurtful is better. Staying quiet is better than saying something hurtful. 
Um, and also there are, you know, a couple of duas that I make. And one is Rabbi Ini Liman Zalta Aliyah Min Khayn al which is a dua that Musa Alayhi made when he lost his home because he was born into a royal home and he had to run away from the Pharaoh. And then he made this dua when, um, after he helped uh, a couple of women with watering their, I think it was their sheep. Um, and then, you know, he made this dua because he needed shelter, he needed food, etc. And then that was when one of the women came out with her father from her house and said that my father wants to talk to you. And then he was given a job and he was given marriage and everything all at once. So Allah answered his dua immediately. Now I know from my life experience, that my du'as, alhamdulillah, always get answered. I always have had and got everything that I've ever wanted. And if I haven't, it's always been replaced with something better. And sometimes things have just delayed in coming into my life. Sometimes it's just not been the right time. So I can, you know, cry and get upset about not being married. But at the end of the day, it obviously is not the right time for me yet. And that's why I'm not married. Um, so when it will be the right time, obviously I keep on having to make the effort and not just deny someone over a superficial thing, like a mole on their face, <laughs> but you know, as long as I make the effort and I give each person that opportunity to get to know me, if they if they seem to be somewhat suitable and compatible, then I leave the rest to Allah and you know, whenever he blesses me, he blesses me. There are people who have all kinds of circumstances in their lives. They've gone through different difficulties, challenges. You don't know what they've gone through. I myself, I've been through so much. One of the reasons why I've not been on this channel actually for eight years is because I've been through so much. Um, I mean, a lot of that's been great stuff too. It's not all been bad, but I've been through many challenges too. And people that have known me for a long time will tell you that I've been to hell and back several times in my life. I've been tested in many ways. Um, you know, just for example, last year, sadly, my dad passed away with brain cancer. That was a grueling experience. Um, it's also an experience that I do want to talk about one day because I think there's a lot that I learned from that. And I did a lot of research at the time into brain cancer, just cancer in general. Um, and because it was my area of study as well, it's something that I naturally had took an interest in. So that's something I want to talk about. But my point is, is that there are people that go through different, all kinds of difficulties in their lives that we can't judge and, and say that, you know, that person has just not made the effort or they've been too picky or they've been, it could be that at the key, the prime of their, their lives, when they could have found somebody they had something else that preoccupied all their time and consumed them. So let's not judge. Let's just give people the benefit of the doubt. And let's just, let's just, you know, sort out ourselves before we start commenting on other people and their lives. And if we really want to help, if we have that clear, good intention to help, then help, but actually help with something tangible and not just with a, a so-called encouragement or motivation that's actually an insult or an offensive comment because many people like me are trying and even and you know I've, I've even been on social media like Instagram um, YouTube and I've seen women that make content on their channels where they are they're clearly trying to feel stronger they're try, they're going through the same issue where they have had failed relationships or they've not been married or they've they want to get married or like just different, you know, non-Muslims and Muslims, just dif different, they're all people, people with different experiences, different circumstances in their lives. And they say something sometimes that makes the, especially the, the men go and comment on their channels and say things like, oh, you're too, you're going to get old and you're going to be lonely. And it's like, they're already trying so hard to just live as normal as they can and that's hard in itself for a lot of people who are single and wanting to be coupled up so people don't understand where that post is coming from why did that person want to make a post about how they're so happy being single maybe it's because they're not so happy being single but they want themselves to see the the highlights of being single so that they can focus on the good in it 
and not feel so down. We can't assume. Um, anyway, I, there's a lot more to say on this topic, but I'm gonna end it here. Uh, sorry, it's such a rant, but yeah, if you are an auntie and uncle and you're watching this and you know me, trust me, I am, I, I want, would like to get married much more than you would like me to get married. So yeah, that's that. I, I hope that's nice and clear. And if you're in a situation and you want to say something about it, feel free to drop it in the comment below. Um, feel free to like request any videos on this. If you want me to talk more about a certain aspect of this topic or anything else, just drop it in the comments below for me. Um, and also I am actually fundraising right now for a trip to Jordan, uh, where I'm going with a charity called Action for Humanity. And I'll be going to help the displaced Syrian and Palestinian refugees. I'm very excited about that. I really want to go and be able to help with my own hands. So um, please do donate if you can. I'll drop the link as well for that in the somewhere below. I've not, I've not been on YouTube for a while now, so it's, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to guide you, but I know it's somewhere there below. I'll figure it out by the time this is uploaded. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do subscribe. Please feel free to leave any constructive comments. If you're leaving destructive comments, I'm probably not going to take it seriously. I'm just going to skip over it. But, you know, from my experience being on YouTube before, I've had a lot of positive comments and support. So um, I hope you guys are still with me. And, and thank you for being subscribed to my channel for all these years, those the 1,500 of you. Thank you very much. And um, it's nice to be back on YouTube. And hopefully, so my next few videos will be a lot more bright and colourful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.